Hello, and welcome back to the Art Room with Mr. Rick. So today, we're going to be talking about patterns, specifically the kinds of patterns you can find in a city. What patterns can you think of? Maybe the first thing that comes to my mind is windows, like in the skyscrapers. And every skyscraper has a different design for how those windows are laid out. Some are, have big windows that are like the whole story from like floor to ceiling, the whole thing's a piece of glass. Some have little windows like in uh, apartment buildings and hotels. So it's very different. And each building can has, have its own different style, which means for us as artists, each building can have its own different patterns of windows. But there's other things too. What about um, a pattern of street lamps going down the street? What about uh, the lines on the sidewalk? That's a pattern. So there's all kinds of patterns we could find. Um, this project is inspired by If the Dinosaurs Came Back by Bernard Most. And I want to look at, at just a few of the uh, pages in this to uh, point out the different ways that you can draw patterns in the city. Let's go ahead and look at this together. Let's see what patterns we can find. So on this page, um, all of the buildings are all uh, side by side, so all the buildings are about, or all the windows are about the same size, um, so that makes a pattern, the windows. Also, like I mentioned, lines on the sidewalk, we see that here, so that's very good. And there's even a pattern on the door, so lots of patterns to see here. And on this next one, yes, there's a pattern in this building that they're working on, but also, you see how the, uh, the windows are all dots on these skyscrapers? That is because, do you know why? I'm gonna assume one of you said that. <laughs> because someone usually does get it. Um, the windows are smaller because it's very far away. Um, this dinosaur is not close to those buildings, so the windows are very tiny. This dinosaur is very close, so the windows are larger. So if you have a building that's close, the windows should be big. If you have a, uh, a building that's far away, then the windows should be very small. See if we can find another city scene here. So on this one, uh, the windows are kind of medium sized compared to what we've seen before, and again we have lines on the sidewalk. So um, lots, lots of options and uh, lots of good stuff to uh, take from the artwork in this book. So we're going to be drawing a city today. I want you to uh, start off with a horizon line. You're going to draw some different sized rectangles to be skyscrapers. And then um, I want to see patterns. You see patterns of different windows, different sized windows, different shapes of windows. Um, and then you can also add other patterns. You could have patterns of towers that are on the tops of those skyscrapers. You could have patterns of street lights, patterns on the sidewalk. Um, you can draw uh, cars. You can even make a pattern of cars if you wanted to. Um, and then we're going to draw it all in pencil so we can correct mistakes. Then we're going to trace it in black. Black colored pencil or Sharpie is fine. Um, and then, uh, or black marker, um, in any kind of black marker is fine. Uh, and then, well, I'll tell you about that at the end. First, let's draw our city. So the very first thing I'm going to draw is the horizon line. That's super duper important. The horizon line needs to be not not halfway up, not at the bottom, but somewhere in the middle. Somewhere about like right here. Just a straight line right across, just as straight as you could draw it. Mine's not perfectly straight, but it's close enough. This gives us some street to play around with and also lots of room for our skyscrapers. I'm going to go ahead and draw a second one, and this is going to be my sidewalk. And I'm going to film the... Uh, the upper part of my paper with different size skyscrapers and I'm going to add cars and uh, light poles and all the other things we talked about. So I'm going to do that in time lapse to save time.
And here is my finished city with a bunch of different patterns. That was pretty fun to make. I really like that. Um, something I did at the very end, if you have time to trace your pencil with some kind of uh, black marker or colored pencil, um, it's always nice to erase, especially with, with the marker. After the marker's dry, it looks really nice if you erase your pencil lines. That's what I did there at the end. So the special thing we're gonna do, you know how in this book, Bernard Most had the colorful dinosaurs in his city. Well, we're gonna follow his example, only we're gonna bring back our texture monster from our last project. Remember my guy, I named him Mr. Biscuits. I'm going to cut out Mr. Biscuits and I'm gonna put him in the city. He's gonna be a giant, friendly monster looking for biscuits in the city. So I'm gonna do that in time lapse now and then we'll finish up. And here we have it, the finished touch on our two projects that went together, our texture monster and our city patterns. And then you end up with a happy-ish, uh, colorful monster in the city with lots of textures and patterns. I hope you enjoyed this project and I will see you next time in the art room. Say bye, Mr. Biscuits. Bye. <laughs>